Attending today's ceremony is PFC Carter's mother, Ms. Georgie Carter Krell, Associate Director of the Miami Healthcare System, Mr. Mark Morgan, members of the United States Southern Command, Marine Forces South, veterans, employees of the Miami VA Healthcare System, and friends and families. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival. We gather here today, O oh Lord, to honor a hero, a son, a friend, a Marine, a man who served with bravery, passion, and dignity, a man who gave his life in order to protect his fellow Marines. As we present this Medal of Honor flag to that Marine's mother, we ask for your presence, your blessing, to complete the healing, even though the memory and the grieving may continue. May we be ever mindful that it is his kind of sacrifice that makes America great, that it is his kind of courage that epitomizes the armed forces, that it is his kind of action that makes being a Marine synonymous with being a hero. Amen. Please be seated. The symbolism of the Medal of Honor flag commemorates the acts of personal bravery and self-sacrifice at the risk of life above and beyond the call of duty. It gives special emphasis to the fact that the Medal of Honor is the United States of America's highest and most prestigious valors award. The following letter is addressed to Ms. Carter Krell from the Secretary of the Navy. Dear Ms. Skrell, on behalf of the President of the United States and a grateful nation, I am honored to present you the Medal of Honor flag as a symbol of the Medal of Honor posthumously awarded to your son, Private First Class Bruce Wayne Carter, United States Marine Corps, for the valor and sacrifices above and beyond the call of duty. Congress authorized the creation of the Medal of Honor flag as a special recognition for recipients of America's highest military honor. Display of this unique and dignified ceremonial flag is a visible tribute to your son's bravery in combat, which distinguished himself in, as one of our nation's most revered heroes. It serves as a constant reminder to us all of his patriotism and ultimate sacrifice. With best wishes, and gratitude, sincerely, Ray Mavis. Ladies and gentlemen, General John F. Kelly. I'll be very brief. Um, in our country today, the word hero is heavily overused. Most of the time, it's used in reference to people that make millions of dollars a year playing football or basketball or play for my beloved Red Sox. Uh, everyone's a hero. And when everyone's a hero, no one's a hero. But in a very, very small segment of our society today, just about 1%, because it's about 1% of our American uh, population that serves in the armed forces or has served in the armed forces and, of course, their families, the word hero still really means something. Now, if you read the Medal of Honor citation here, it's inconceivable to most people that a young man 40 years ago would 
cover, use his own body to protect his brothers on the battlefield and absorb the blast of a hand grenade, knowing full well he was giving his life. Batman Carter, <laughs> Bruce Wayne, uh, gone now 40 years. Uh, I haven't had to endure anything like that period of time, but I can tell you, uh, if you've never lost a child, particularly a child in combat, it's forever. The grief, the sadness, and the pride. You always remind me of that. Um, and I just close by saying, as hard as it is to understand a young man doing what Batman Carter did, as hard as it is to understand, if you've ever seen it, a very, very small percentage of people that even wear the uniform have actually been in close combat. If you've ever seen it, even one time, that when it all starts, the firefights, the explosions, if you've ever seen it, it is and no matter how many times you see it, it's an amazing thing to watch. Young men and, yep, young women, not running away from the danger, but running towards it. Doing exactly the opposite of what our society and even just basic human instinct tells you to do, to run away from the danger, but they don't. They run towards it, and they run towards it as much for their buddies as for their flag and for their country. So 40 years ago, a very, very, very brave young man did what most people in our country can't conceive of, knowingly gave his life for his buddies. The Medal of Honor, Georgie. General Kelly, Mrs. Carter, please join us right here. Both. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The following citation accompanied PFC Carter's Medal of Honor. The President of the United States, in the name of the Congress, takes pride in presenting the Medal of Honor posthumously to Private First Class Bruce W. Carter, United States Marine Corps, for service as set forth in the following for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as grenadier with Company H, 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marines, 3rd Marine Division in connection with combat operations against the enemy in the Republic of Vietnam. On 7 August 1969, Private First Class Carter's unit was maneuvering against the enemy during Operation Idaho Canyon and came under a heavy volume of fire from a numerically superior hostile force. The lead element soon became separated from the main body of the squad by a brush fire. Private First Class Carter and his fellow Marines were pinned down by vicious crossfire when, with complete disregard for his own safety, he stood in full view of the North Vietnamese Army soldiers to deliver a devastating volume of fire at their positions. The accuracy and aggressiveness of his attack caused several enemy casualties and forced the remainder of the soldiers to retreat from the immediate area. Shouting directions to the Marines around him, Private First Class Carter then commenced leading them from the path of the rapidly approaching brush fire when he observed a hostile grenade land between him and his companions. Fully aware of the probable consequences of his action, but determined to protect the men following him, he unhesitantly threw himself over the grenade, absorbing the full effects of his detonation with his own body. Private First Class Carter's indomitable courage, inspiring initiative, and selfless devotion to duty upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life in the service of his country. Signed, Richard M. Nixon, President of the United States of America. The letter from the Secretary of the Navy and the Medal of Honor flag displayed here today will now be presented to Mrs. Georgie Carter Krell from General Kelly in honor of her late son, PFC Bruce Wayne Carter.
Mr. Mark Morgan, please join General Kelly and Mrs. Carter Krell. Mrs. Carter Krell will now effect a symbolic transfer of the Medal of Honor flag to the Mr. Bruce to Bruce W. Carter Medical Center and the Miami VA Healthcare System for the display in honor of her heroic son who sacrificed his life for the fellow Marines and the United States of America. <laughs> 